The next thing we need is a 13 period simple moving average. Now we've got the 200, we've got the 20, we're gonna add a smaller brother to the mix here, the 13. So we've added the 13 period moving average, which is now moving average is getting closer and closer to your price. Now, something interesting about this moving average, notice that your 20 period moving average is not very relevant to the stock on the left hand side. Why am I saying that the 20 period moving average is not very relevant? Here is the key to finding which moving average of our mix is the most relative moving average. You have to see when your stock has a counter bounce, where the bounce stops and resumes the trend, whichever moving average is close to that peak is your key moving average. You see, at this point here, the 20 per, the 200 is not relevant. It's super far away. At this point, the 20 is not relevant either. It's too far away to be relevant. We have to find which stop, which moving average to operate on. Which is the most dominant moving average right now? Which trend is the which moving average is the stock's trend obeying more? It will never obey all of them at the same time. It will rarely obey two of them at the same time. Most trends will pick a moving average to obey, and we've got to isolate which one that is. And I'm giving you the secret to know which moving average to zero in on and put all of your attention there. In this case, we're gonna put all of our attention on the 13 because its last pullback stopped just short of the 13 and resumed the drop, okay? If we go to the right-hand side of the chart, we see that the stock rallies to the upside and then experience its pullback. Where, where does the pullback stop and the movement to the upside resume? Where does it stop and what moving average does it halt at? Does it halt at the 20? Does it halt at the 13? We have to find out which moving average is the dominant moving average. And this is how we do it. So on the left-hand side, that pullback halts right at or near the 13. It doesn't have to touch it, just become near it and resumes. This confirms that it is the 13 and not the 20 period moving average. And on the right-hand side of the chart, the stock jumps above the moving average, pulls back and halts, and then resumes the move to the upside. That halting area halts right at or near the 13, further confirming that the 13 is the dominant moving average, not the 20 on the way up as well. Now, knowing how to do this is extraordinarily important. Get the wrong, pick the wrong moving average and your trading is off. We can't do that. All right, now, we need one more here. We need to add the eight period moving average, which is even closer to, this, to, the, to, to the action. Now, notice how we can tell that it's not the eight period moving average that's the dominant moving average because Microsoft's drop then pullback broke through the eight. So once it breaks through the eight, we now know we're not dealing with the eight. Let's see if it's going to obey the next moving average, which is the 13 period moving average, and boom, it obeys it, okay? Same here, as I mentioned, stock jumps above the moving averages, pulls back, we're, gonna, we're asking ourselves, is it going to halt at the eight? Boom, it breaks through the eight. Okay, is it going to halt at or near the 13? Boom! It, it rallies, failing to deeply penetrate the 13, giving us the indication that it's not the eight, it's not the 20, it's the 13 period moving average. And we can actually drop the rest if we like. Now, here is something very, very Beautiful, fascinating, and beautiful. 
A lot of traders ask me, Oliver, um, can I keep all of the moving, should I keep all of the moving averages on the chart or should I just drop those that are not dominant at the time? Once I identify my dominant moving average, can I just drop the rest? You can, but this is where I'm suggesting that maybe you don't in this case, okay? That's, that's someone trying to reach me. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore that, all right? Now, take a look at traders at the space between your eight period moving average and your 13 period moving average, okay? Take a look at the space. This zone, if you will, this zone is a very interesting zone because it's telling us where a turn should occur. So as we slip between the eight and the 13, we can, we can utilize that zone as a very interesting possible turn. Just lost my video here, we come back. When the, col the desired color resumes the trend out of that zone, we strike, okay? Look, notice how Microsoft slips back into the eight to 13 period moving average zone, all right? And then green takes us out of the zone. Boom, we strike on that green. So we strike the bar, we jump into the bar, do you understand? That takes us out of the zone. And this can help your timing, it can help your accuracy. And if you help your accuracy traders, you're going to help your profitability, the consistency of your profitability. Take a look at these zones. Zone. Look at the red bar that takes us out of the zone. Boom! Look at the zone and look at the green bar that takes us out of the zone. Boom! Now, how do you protect yourself? You protect yourself based on the bar that you just put your money in. If you put your money into this green bar, protect yourself under that green bar. If you went short on this red bar, protect yourself above that red bar. We're not gonna lose the bar more than the bar that we jumped into. That's how you protect yourself. Now, remember, we have found that the 13 period moving average is our key moving average. So we're going to ride the trend out as long as the stock does not violate that moving average by two bars. It's not enough to break the moving average with one bar. We need a two bar break. Let's, let's take a look at this. I want to show you something here. My space concept. Let's talk about space here. I want you, let's, let's go back to this concept that I started talking about just a little bit ago. Go to the left hand side of your chart, right? And I want you to I want you to take a look at how all of your moving averages are clustered together there. Notice how when the trend starts, the moving averages start separating from each other. Now notice how we go when the, the trend is in its most powerful state, the three moving averages have this three finger like um, power trending formation. Three fingers spread apart. Okay? Almost like a, a highway with a middle line and outer lines. Now notice how these lines, as we get deeper and deeper away from the 200, the moving averages start to get closer together now. And so now we go from this three finger spread in a trending way to our narrower spaces between them until they get small again. Now that's an indication. These two are indications. The indication one, that your moving averages have pulled away from the 200. As they have pulled away from the 200, they have come together once again. This is one of the strongest possible signs, scenarios, that we're about to snap back in the opposite direction. 
This is always the $64,000 question in trading. It is, when does a trend stop and begin to reverse in the opposite direction? And I'm giving you some of the components to that, that answer, that 64,000, to the answer to that $64,000 question. One of the, one of, some of the keys are, are your three moving averages wide apart from your 200? And are they now close together again? If you can get that combination. Now, if you get a pop above your moving averages, notice on the left that your stock wasn't able to pop above all three of them. It penetrated the eight and then dropped again. But when you clearly, not in a feeble fashion, but the very next time you pop above those clustered moving averages, we need to read the next pullback. That's gonna tell us what the dominant moving average is. Wherever it halts, it halts at the 13 as we mentioned, boom, we buy the bar that takes us out of the eight to 13 zone and here begins our next play to the upside all the way back to a wide, a narrow state again. So guys, markets repeat this, these two states over and over again. They go from narrow to wide, and after wide, back to narrow. Narrow to wide, wide, back to narrow. Now, there's another narrow. There's narrow on the three moving averages, wide, and then back to narrow again for your three. And from narrow, we go back to trending apart from each other again until we repeat this narrow, wide, back to narrow, narrow, wide, back to narrow. And this is where consistency comes from. People need to understand that the market is almost trapped on rails. It repeats the same cycle over and over and over again. And I know it may not feel like it's the same, but it is exactly the same. The market's trapped on rails. This is where consistent consistency in your profitability comes from, understanding the repetitive cycle and understanding where you are in the repetitive cycle. And these moving averages can tell you, am I in a narrow state? If I'm in a narrow state, we're about to move into a wide state, a trending state. If I'm in a trending state, we will at one point, once we're wide away, we will at one point go back to those three moving averages becoming narrow again. And now a reversal is more imminent than a continuation to the downside. Now, once you understand these concepts, it just becomes a numbers game from here on out. Narrow, sorry, narrow moving averages. Once again, narrow moving averages, narrow moving averages. Now, the thing that you have to, don't miss this point, the three moving averages are sort of like the children that operate and play together. The 200 is like the parent. The children leave the parent for the wide state and come back eventually to be with the parent, the 200, all right? So there's two dynamics going on. The three can be close together. Then when they start playing away from the parent, they separate from each other a little bit, although they stay within the same vicinity of each other, all right? Then they get close together, they huddle again and say, now it's time to go back to our parent. And then again, it is this cycle that repeats itself over and over and over again. And we play it this way every, every single day. This is Microsoft's activity today. Now, some people will say, um, Oliver, um, what about movements to the upside? Well, I can show you movements above the 200 as well. Let me just quickly say this. Look, 
five plus percent of all trading losses come from the inappropriate use of moving averages. Here's the thing. Most people are trying to buy against the moving averages. So when you've got your 20, your 13, and your eight all flowing in one direction, they want to be smarter than the market and try to pick a bottom, when in fact you should just find a way to jump on board the stop on one of the pullbacks back toward the moving averages, all right? 85% of all losses are fighting the three moving averages, fighting the direction of the 20, fighting the direction of the 13, fighting the direction of the eight. When one of them is in one, going in one direction, it's powerful enough. When three of them are going in, in, in one direction and you're on the other side of that, you're not only a losing trader, you're an unintelligent losing trader. It is unintelligent, it is not intelligent to go against all three of these. So one of the first things you should do is look for stocks that have all three moving averages pointing upward or pointing downward and insert yourself into that trend. When? When the stock moves back toward the middle one most of the time. When it moves back toward the eight or the 13, then you jump on board the bar that starts moving you back away from the eight and 13. Protect yourself with the bar. It's a rather simple but very powerful approach. Let me show you another stock, NVIDIA. Notice the same formula, the same type of scenario here. You've got NVIDIA to the left. This is activity yesterday and today, the 26th and 27th of October. You started off narrow. You went wide. Now look at this. Look at NVIDIA's bounce that did not break the eight. So NVIDIA is saying the 13 is not the key moving average. Neither is the 20 the key moving average. NVIDIA is saying that it's the eight. So now we jump on board the bar that moves us away from the eight. Boom, protect ourselves above the bar, okay? On the upside, it is the 13. We break the eight and halt at the 13. So now it's the 13 that the stock is obeying. You've got this traders. You've got the four key moving averages and how to use them. And if you trade the majority of time in the direction of the 20, of the 13, of the eight, you're gonna instantly improve your profitability and your consistency. If you look for specific entry points to jump into that trend on retracements back to the eight or the 13, sometimes all the way back to the 20, and then identify the bar that moves you away from the eight, the 13, or the 20, protecting yourself above or below that bar, you've got a dynamic moving average trading system. It sounds simple, it sounds basic, but most extraordinarily profitable things are traders. One last thing I'll show you is one on the upside. I think we had um, Baba today, all right? And here, take a look at your moving averages. Look at when the three moving averages are relatively clustered together. Look at the move above the moving averages. Now, this move was so powerful that it got virtually no retracements back to any moving average. That's how powerful that moving, that, that trend is. Now you can keep going down the line. If you're not getting pullbacks to the eight, then you have to go to the next Fibonacci number, which is the five period moving average. This is extraordinarily rare to get a move with this type of power, which means that we have to find alternative ways to enter, which I can teach you as well. Look at the left-hand side of the chart. Look at the drop and the move back into that zone I told you about. Right back in between the eight and the 13, we jump into the bar that starts moving us away from the 13 again. We protect ourselves above that bar and there's that beautiful sound again. Okay, 
if we look here, we can catch it early, where we get above the moving averages, we pull back into the zone. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. We can jump back into the bar that moves us out of that zone. All right, powerful trend here in Baba today. Very, very powerful trend. Traders, basic, simple. A 12-year-old can follow this. Most profitable things are just like that. We make the game more complex than it needs to be. We make the game more difficult. We bring difficulty to the market. We bring complexity to the market. We make it harder than it has to be. The market only goes up, down, and sideways. That's not a complex mechanism. The engine of a Ferrari is complex. The market is primitive, up, down, sideways, repeat, up, down, sideways, repeat, narrow state, wide state, back to narrow state, trending state, all moving averages down, trending state, all moving averages up, buy zone between the eight and 13 sometimes, sell zone between the eight and 13 sometimes, Get into the bar, leaving the key moving average. Protect yourself above or below that bar. And that is your powerful, simple, profitable moving average trading system.